Hello humans, Halcylan here. Today's guide is meant to teach you how to maximize all of the talents in Greedfall on the same character. Before we begin, there's a few things that I need to make absolutely clear for everyone. In my combat tutorial, I briefly mentioned many of the mechanics I'll talk about today, so if you've watched that already, you'll hear me repeat some stuff. Also, the title is not entirely accurate, as you cannot permanently unlock every single talent unless you obtain 18 talent points, and since you only earn one of those every 4 levels, that is going to take a long time to achieve. Unless there's a level cap, then it will be impossible to achieve. However, there are certain factors you can make use of in order to take every one of your talents to its maximum level when you need it most. I also need to clarify this. Everything stated in this video you can easily deduce on your own once you play this game for a few hours, but it should help those who are just starting out and want to plan out their character. Alright, before I talk about how to improve all these talents, I need to make a recap of what each of them does. You can read this by yourself in the game, so if you want to skip this part, you may go to this timestamp. If you didn't skip, let's start. Charisma improves persuasion attempts in quests, making people better understand your point of view and reach an agreeable conclusion. The prices you get while trading will also be more favorable to you. Science allows you to craft your own potions, poisons and ammunition at any crafting table, as well as offer you the ability to destroy certain walls with explosives, opening up a different approach to some of the quests. If you choose to skip this skill, you can make a deal with the alchemist in the city of Al Sad. You supply him with ingredients and you pay him 40 gold coins for each health potion he brews for you. But in this game, 40 gold is quite expensive, so I recommend you to quickly invest 1 point in science whenever you're able to, or boost this skill some other way. Lockpicking is self-explanatory. Without it, some locked doors are going to remain closed to you until you find a key. Same can be said about chests you may happen upon in your travels, and those may contain some really good loot. You'll only know once you pry them open. Intuition will allow you to make an observation during certain conversations and get the character to act in a way that benefits you. It can also highlight resource-rich areas that you may miss otherwise, so I highly recommend you to invest one point in this talent as soon as you're able to, because crafting is very important in Greedfall. Craftsmanship will make use of those resources you found with intuition by giving you the option to improve weapons and armor you find in the world. You can skip this skill altogether if you're willing to empty your coin purse at the new Serene Blacksmith because he's able to craft you any mods you want. You will have to supply your own materials if you chose this route, just like with the Alchemist. Lastly, there's Vigor, which should be the first talent you level up because it gives you passive health regen when you're out of combat. This one is on par with the science talent at early levels, since health potions are scarce and your health bar needs all the help it can get. In addition, difficult terrain and narrow passages are impossible to traverse without this talent, but this isn't such a big of a deal. Your carry capacity can also be increased by Vigor. Now that I've talked about something you can find out on your own in the first 5 minutes of the game, let's move on to the main subject. Right now, my character is level 22 and already has 6 talent points, with the next one becoming available at level 25. If I play my cards right, once I unlock the 7th talent point, I believe I could maximize the Sarday's potential. How will I achieve that? You're about to find out. When I started the video, I said that certain factors can improve your talent, so let's talk about all of that. First of all, you can find certain pieces of clothing or armor that will boost some of your talents by an additional point. The ones I found so far are the following. Goldsmith or blacksmith gloves, which can improve your crafting skill by one. Capes are a status symbol, and as such, they will boost your charisma when worn. And if you happen to have the discoverer's hat, your intuition will be improved by one as well. I think I got this hat as a bonus for pre-ordering the game, and I'm not sure if everyone will have it. But so far, this is the only piece of clothing that can enhance your intuition from what I've found. I hope there's others out there, otherwise you'll need to leave intuition at level 2 or wait for your 8th talent point. Some of your talents may also be improved with a strap mod on your chest armor. The flask pouch will enhance your skill in the natural sciences, the lock pouch will make you more skilled at picking locks when you have no key, and the scroll or the talisman can improve your vigor. These chest mods will require a ruby to be crafted and those are pretty rare. You sometimes find rubies in mineral veins, other times you can loot them from creatures, but the most reliable way of obtaining them is buying one from your local trader. If you just got a new chest armor and you wish to reinstall one of these mods on it, the best way to do it is to deconstruct this mod from your previous armor. But you only have 50% base chance to get the ruby back, so to save yourself some time and money, it's best to save the game before recycling the mod. 
If scrapping the mod doesn't return your ruby, reload. Some pieces of equipment, when combined with maximum craftsmanship, can increase the recycling chance to 75% or more. But that is enough about gear. The second factor that can improve your talents is the fact that all of your companions will offer a friendship perk once you complete each of their personal quests. So let's talk about all of them. Kurt can teach you how to better improve your gear as he increases your craftsmanship level by one. Living in a boat... It's a ship. Not a boat. Living on a ship all his life made Vasco more aware of his surroundings and he will share this skill with you by increasing your intuition by one point. Siora's knowledge of this island will increase your vigor, but you'd have to progress through the main storyline to unlock her friendship bonus. Since I suffer from side quest syndrome, I don't have her perk just yet. The authoritative presence of Father Petrus will help you appear more charismatic to those you interact with. Lastly, Aphra's skill in the applied sciences will also be available to you once you do your best to sate her... curiosity. Now let us analyze all the pieces of the puzzle. As I've already said, you cannot have all of your talents maxed out at the same time, so you'll have to become a jack-of-all-trades by investing a few points into all of these talents. You also need to pick up which companions and gear you will take with you, depending on what you plan to do. As an example, you only craft armor and weapon improvements at a workbench, and usually around workbenches you have access to your stash. This means that there's no need to have the science and craftsmanship talents maxed out when you're in the field, so you can leave behind any companions and gear that improve these skills. Earlier I mentioned that 7 talent points are enough to max out everything, so this is how I recommend you invest them as you level up. Your first point should go in Vigor, your second in Intuition. Science should be the third priority, because by level 9, Intuition should have helped you find plenty of ingredients. Crafting, lockpicking and charisma should quickly follow with one point invested in each. Ok, 6 points invested, we get the 7th at level 25 and once we do, we put it into lockpicking. Now all that's left to do is divide all activities in this game into 3 categories so we may better organize our gear. What you'll be doing for most of your time in tier 3D is adventuring. Walking through the world from place to place, fighting bandits and dangerous beasts, uncovering secrets, discovering treasure and gathering materials. The skills that should be maxed out during this time are Vigor, Lockpicking and to some degree Intuition. Intuition doesn't have to be maxed out. Level 1 is needed to highlight resources and level 2 is enough for sneaking through these narrow passages. You may not have known about this particular use of intuition because it is very easy to miss, but it's there. The second activity that will eat a big chunk of your time is Diplomacy. You are here as a legate of the Merchants Guild and your role in this island is to broker alliances between the factions and nurture relationships to ensure prosperous growth that would benefit everyone. Missionaries, scientists, traders and natives. If you resort to using swords instead of words, that's like lighting the fuse to the powder keg. As such, when engaged in these conversations, it's best to be in good company that will increase your charisma and intuition perks. Last but just as important is crafting. Hammering a shoulder plate on your armor and brewing a healing potion can be the difference between life and death. Obviously, the two talents needed for this activity are science, whose maximum level is more economical as it allows you to craft better potions and use fewer materials while assembling bullets, as well as craftsmanship, whose max level will allow you to craft the highest quality mods on your weapons and armor. Now that we've reviewed each piece of the puzzle, let's put them all together. The best way to maximize all of your talents is the following. Obtain the clothes that I talked about earlier, the gloves, the cape, the hat, if you have it, if not, bad luck, you're gonna have to keep intuition at level 2. Once that's done, it's time to get crafting. Put on your blacksmith's gloves, ask Kurt to give you a hand, and now that you're at level 3 craftsmanship, start improving your gear. Since you've been traveling for a while, you should have a few crafting materials available, so use some of those to build the thievery mod on your favorite piece of armor. You already have 2 points invested in lockpicking and with this attachment you can now unlock every single treasure chest you come across in your travels. With that you've got 2 talents maximized right out of the gate. Since you are still at the workbench, get another piece of chest armor and build the flask mod on it. You already have a point in science, so you will equip this robe whenever you're in the mood for alchemy, preferably with Aphra giving you some helpful indicators and improving your potions. When you're done with alchemy, put this robe back in the stash. Talent 3 maxed out. While you're at it, take another lightweight chest armor and build a talisman on it. This will increase your confidence in your athletic capabilities, but for now it should be packed neatly in your bags. Now that you're ready for adventure, leave Kurt and Afra home and instead take Vasco and Siora with you. 
With Vigor already at level 1 you will be able to cross narrow walkways, and with the Talisman equipped you will be able to jump over large gaps. And if you progress through the game and Siora is now your friend, you have the benefit of level 3 Vigor which can be used to scale walls and get to the places that are most difficult to reach. The Vigor and Lockpicking modes are interchangeable. Put whichever of these on your main piece of armor, and carry the other one for utility to equip it when you need it most. With Vigor now maximized, we are at 4 fully developed talents. Vasco is a versatile fellow, his intuition bonus can help you when adventuring, but it's also useful when you engage in diplomacy as it allows you to notice details about the ones you talk to and exploit those details to suit your needs. And if you're about to have a meeting with important people, bring Petrus along as well. His presence will ensure any conversation gets steered in your favor, since you already have one point invested in charisma and you also wear a cloak. If you're also wearing the intuition boosting hat, you will have the upper hand in every conversation. With all that said, that is all of your talents maxed out. Granted, they're not all maximized at the same time, they're only fully unlocked when you need them most, but that's how it is. You can't have everything you want all the time, sometimes you have to make some sacrifices. I still need to become really good friends with Petrus and Siora and I could potentially follow my own advice and unlock all the talents in this manner, but to be honest, I don't want to. The point of talents in this game is to give you different options to approach certain situations and quests, and being able to do everything at once is a bit immersion breaking. I occasionally switched between my treasure hunter hat and my intuition hat to get each of their bonuses as needed, but I got tired of it and I just invested the talent point and intuition for its ability to highlight crafting resources, so now I no longer need to switch my hats. And alternating between my companions strictly depending on their perks isn't something I like doing because it spoils my role-playing experience. I mean, I recommended that you take Petrus and Vasco when you're meeting others, but if you chat with the natives, you can let Siora speak on your behalf and I find that interesting. So all that I've said in this video, it's something you can definitely do if you want to, but you don't have to do any of it. With all that said, I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Till then, be good.